hi modern fashion designers welcome back to class this is modern woman april i want to specially thank all my subscribers and if this is your first time seeing us you're highly welcome please join us by clicking on the subscribe button turn on your notification bell so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video thank you so in today's class we'll learn how to make this very beautiful top it's actually a crop top just that i want the length to be a bit longer you also learn how to draft directly on your fabric, how to shorten the excess back length of your top, how to make a bishop sleeve with an elastic band, and also how to turn your neckline with facing. I also have a detailed tutorial on those skirts. You can find the link on the description box and also on the comment section. Now to do this, I'm going to be using the freehand method, but I have a tutorial where i use them um, this pattern here to make a crop top so if you're using a pattern feel free to check the tutorial out and if you also want to know how to draw this pattern here i have a detailed tutorial on how you can make a basic bodies pattern so without wasting much of our time let's get right into the tutorial of now the we are cutting the front part of it first so i folded my fabric into two and the width of this fold here is my ball circumference divided by four plus two inches I've also gone ahead to rule my starting line. I will start taking all the measurements. So from the starting line here, I will get my bust point. So I'm working with a bust point of um, 11 inches and the top length of 20 inches. So this one inch I have here will be for the hemming allowance. After this, what I will do is to measure the neckline. On the starting line, the neckline I'm using is 4 as the neck width and 4.5 as the neck depth. So this is 4.5 here. And I'm making use of a round neck. You can do a neckline of your choice. After this, what I'll do now is to get my shoulder measurement. So I'm working with a shoulder of 16 inches. 16 divided by 2 will give me 8. So this is 8 inches here. And from here, I'll come down here by 8.8 .8 inches. How did I get it? 8.8, .8, I divided my ball circumference by 6 plus 1.5 plus another 1 inch. So this is the point here. And I'll come to this line here and get the same 8 inches I did on the shoulder. I'll do the same 8 inches here. And from here, I'll connect to this place. But before I do that, I'll come down by 1.5 inches for the shoulder slope. Remember, the front and the back shoulder slope are not the same. 1.5 for the front and 1 inch for the back. So this is 1.5 for the front. And from here... I'll connect to this chest line. Now what I will do is to come here on this um, chest line here. I'll go up by 3 inches. So today I'm doing 0 0.5 on this part here. So from this point of 3 inches, I'll come in by 0 0.5 inch. And I'll connect from this point to this shoulder slope. After this, what I'll do is to come to this chest line and measure my bust circumference divided by 4. So, my bust circumference is 38. I'm working with 38. 38 divided by 4 will give me 9.5. This is 9.5. And because I'll be adding a slip to this, I'll add half inch for ease. And from here, I'll connect back to this place with my curve rule. After this, what I'll do now is to get my waist dart. So the bust um bust band measurement I'm working with is um eight inches. Eight I'll divide it by two, which will give me four inches. So this is four inches here. So this four inches, what I'll do is to come to this um bust point here, come down by one inch. I'll come down by one inch. I'll also take four inches here. On that point of one inch, I'll take four inches, then I'll connect. I'll rule a line to connect these two. 
after that i'll come to this um line here this that line i have here and do a dart intake of 0 0.75 here and 0 0.75 here making it a total dart of 1.5 inches so i'm taking 0 0.75 on this side and 0 0.75 on this side and i'll connect the dart legs to this point So guys, this is basically it for the front. What I'll do now is to add the seam allowance. So I'll add half inch to this side, half inch here for joining, half inch here for the sleeve, and I'll add 1.5 inches here for the side joining allowance. Remember I said I'm using this one inch I left here for the hemming of this top. After adding all the seam allowances, I'll cut this out and we'll move over to the back pattern. So for the back, this is my back piece here and I placed it on fold so i'll be starting i'm taking all my measurement from this line here this is my center back line so for this um back here i've gone ahead to get my shoulder from shoulder to the chest line remember how i got it your ball circumference divided by six plus 1.5 plus an additional one inch and this here is from my shoulder to the top length while this here this is the neckline remember i did four inches as the neck width so for the back i'm doing 4 by 1.5 and I also did I also got my shoulder measurement that is my shoulder divided by 2 here and I came down by 1 inch for the back shoulder slope remember I did 1.5 for the front so 1 inch for the back shoulder slope and I, from there I connected it to the chest line now what I'll do is to get the midpoint of here from this um shoulder slope here to this chest line I'll get the midpoint of it I will place a mark there and from there I'll go in by 0 0.5 inch. After that, I'll connect back to the shoulder slope like this. And I'll come to this chest line here and get my ball circumference divided by 4. I have 9.5. 9.5, I'll add the same half inch I added to the front because this is going to be having a sleeve. So half inch making it 10 inches. So I'll connect with my curve root back to this point now having done this what i'll do is to get to also do the same waist dart that i did for the front so this is the waist dart here and i'll connect it up to this um chest line so this is four inches i'll use a straight line to connect it Now what I'll do is to impute the same 0 0.75 inch I did on both sides for the front. I'll also repeat the same for the back here. And I'll connect back to this chest line. After this, before I impute my waist circumference, what I'll do is to come in here from this starting line here. I'll go in by 0 0.75 here. And from here, I'll rule up to this point. So this here is for my back tightening. Now after getting this back tightening, I will take my waist measurement from this um, back tightening that I did here. So my I'm working with um, 32. 32 divided by 4 will give me 8 inches. This is 8 inches here. Remember, I took the 8 inches from this back tightening line here, no longer from this starting line here. So 8 inches, then this 1.5 inches for the dart, I will also replace it here. And from there, I'll connect to this um, chest line. Okay. Having done this, what I'll do now is to impute my zipper allowance. So the zipper allowance I'm working with is one inch. So I'll come here, starting from this um, back tightening line. I'm no longer making use of this particular line here. I'll come here and take my one inch. I'll also go up here and take the same one inch. And I'll rule. After this, 
in order to prevent that excess that we normally have at the back remember the back and the front length are not usually the same so what i'll do now is to go up here from this um line here from this top length line here i'll go up by one inch here and connect back to this point if you've watched the pattern drafting class we did on paper, you'll notice that we eliminated this through the front bust there. But because we are doing this on fabric, we're going to eliminate it through the back center. So take one inch from the center back and please do not do more than one inch. Not to worry, this will not affect your top in any way. Trust me, it won't affect your top in any way. So what I'll do is just to clean here off. So having done this now, I will start imputing all my same allowances. So I've added the same allowances. Remember, this is our zipper allowance here. One, I did one inch. Here is half inch for joining, half inch here. And I added the same 1.5 inch I have on the front side. The same 1.5 inch is here. And this is one inch for hemming. So after cutting this out, what I'll do is to cut a tiny facing for both the front and the back neckline i won't be turning this with lining if you want to make use of lining and if you want to know how to turn this with lining i already have a detailed tutorial on how you can turn a crop top with lining so for this i'll just be making use of facing for the neckline and i'll fold the damp part of this after cutting this is what i have this is the front part and this is the facing like i said earlier i'll be making use of facing for the neckline and this here, this is the back part here, and this is the facing. Now we'll start joining these pieces together. Now to join these, I'll place the both of them right side facing each other like this. I'll take it to my sewing machine and run a stitch with half inch seam allowance. After stitching around the neckline, this is what I have. And I also gone ahead to give tiny notches on this neckline. So what I'll do now is to flip this facing to the wrong side of this top. After that, I'll take it to my ironing table. This is a hemming gum. I'll place a hemming gum in between this facing and this are main fabric here. And I'll iron it. I'll press it down. After that, what I'll do is to hold down the dart. As you can see, I've also transferred what I have on this side to this side. So I'll take it to my sewing machine and um, sew the darts. After I'm done sewing the darts, what I'll do now is to set this aside and bring in the back part. Now, these are the two back pieces we have. I've also transferred the same markings I have here to this other part here. Now, remember for the front part, I joined the face and force, but for the back, we're going to leave the neckline like this for now. Now, what we are going to do is to stitch the dart lines first. After stitching the dart, what I'll do now is to attach the zipper. After installing the zipper, this is what I have. You can see that I didn't take the zipper up to my hemming allowance. I stopped where my hemming allowance started. So it is time for us to attach the facing now what i'll do is to zip this down then you open it up like this open it up place the facing and the fabric right side facing each other right side facing each other like this then you stitch with half an inch seam allowance after stitching here what you do is also to stitch here, here, stitch here, and stitch here. After stitching, this is what I have. What I'll do next is to cut off this SS zipper, then give this place a notch. After that, I'll flip this facing over to the wrong side. So this is what we have at the wrong side. Next is for us to attach the shoulder. What I'll do is to lay the front and the back side, right side facing each other like this. 
after laying them right side facing each other you see this part here the facing part you bring it out you bring it out so this is the facing of this front part and this is the facing of this back part here we are going to pick them together the facing of this back part here with the facing of this front part main fabric to main fabric facing to facing like this make sure that these two same lines are matching each other here then you pin it down after pinning you take it to your sewing machine and run a straight stitch here you do same thing to this other side pick up the facing facing to facing and um, main fabric to main fabric and you run a stitch after joining the shoulder this is what i have here what i'll do now is to turn it like this so when i turn it this is what it looks like you can see the back side so don't forget to place your hemming gum here and press it down after this what i'm going to do is to join the side so i'll join the two sides and show you what to do next after joining the sides this is what i have next is to hem the damp part here so to hem this damp part what i'll do is to open the zip down now to hem this damp part you can do this in so many ways but i'm going to show you two ways that you can use now i've gone ahead to search this raw edge here what i'll do is just to fold it once here and line it but before i do that what i'm going to do is to turn it to this right side flip it backwards like this to the right side of this um top then stitch here first here first also do same thing to the other side push this forward then flip it to the right side first stitch here that is one then the second one is let's say i didn't hem this down part here and i want to fold it into two like this so what i'll just do is to bend it forward like this bend it down once and twice then i'll start hemming i'll start stitching from here all the way i hope you understand so for me, since I've already searched these raw edges here, there's no need folding it twice. So I'll just fold it once by flipping it backwards, stitch here first before turning it to this part, then hem it. I'll show you what I mean. So like I said earlier, this is it. I first flipped it to the right side, stitch here. So what I'll do now is to turn it like this. I'll start stitching after hemming this is what i have and this is what the inside looks like you can see now you can also decide not to stitch this you can decide to use your hemming gum to just place it in between this and um, press it down so this is what we have next is for us to cut the sleeve so guys for the sleeve note that you can make use of any sleeve of your choice but for me i'm making the exact sleeve we have on the thumbnail so this is my sleeve pattern here i'll be cutting this out with my sleeve pattern i have a detailed tutorial on how you can draft this um sleeve here you'll find the link to the tutorial on the comment section so what i'll do now is to use this pattern to cut out the sleeve i'm making you can see this is my sleeve length here but i just want to make do with the leftover fabric that i have so i'll just fold this here so i'm making use of the whole of this as my sleeve length this part here will be my hemming allowance now what i'll do is to come to this point here on the center line here i extended the line here so i'll go up by two inches here I'm having a little pleat on the shoulder area. That is why I'm going up here by two inches. Now on this part here, see this line I have here. I'll go out by half inch. On this part here to this line, I'll go out by half inch. After going out here by half inch, see this part here. I'll also go up here by half inch here. And on this line here, I'll add my 
allowance so i'm using one inch for the allowance so the same half inch here i went up here by half inch and i added one inch here for the allowance for the joining allowance so this is it i'll connect all the points together like this After that, I'll come to this um, sleeve length here and go out by 4 inches. On both sides. 4 inches on both sides. Then I'll connect from this point here to this 4 inches line. So guys, this is it. What I'll do now is to cut this out. After cutting, I will notch the center. So remember, you need two pieces of this. This is one and this is two. So guys, what I'll do now is to join these two parts together like this. Hem this part. Remember, I'll be having elastic on this part here. So, I'll fold this part here like this. Join these two together here. Then, this part here will be joined to the armhole of this top. I hope you understand. So, I will do that and show you. This is the final look of our top. You can see it's so beautiful. Remember, you can make yours shorter than this. I'm taking this to church. That is why mine is a bit longer. For the sketch tutorial, you can find the link on the comment section and also on the description box. Thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. I'll see you in my next class. Bye for now.